Tom, what is good people? Today I want to talk about uh, my deliverance testimony with the intention of this video is to encourage um, people to go and seek their deliverance from a mature deliverance minister. Um, I know I went through an awful lot of deliverance prior to actually having a deliverance, a mature deliverance minister pray over me. Um, but what my preconceived ideals of deliverance was to now like has massively changed it's made me realize that it's way more complex of an issue and and in depth than i even thought and imagined um and this is from someone who's fasted a lot and done a lot of self deliverance um gone through a lot of deliverance you know training and courses and stuff but but we really did hit a nerve yesterday I want to shout out Ralph Gray for getting me in, uh, hooked up with with uh, Everett E. Cox. I'm actually honoured to have, have had my first actual proper deliverance uh, with a mature minister with Everett E. Cox, who I'd done a review of his book, Doing the Supernatural Works of Jesus. This book, I've already done a review of it on the page. If you want to watch the video, I'll plug it, link for it down below. But I'll be honest with you, if you want a shortcut, don't even need to watch the review. This is hands down the best book I have read on deliverance. Hands down one of the best Christian books I've read. Not just on deliverance, but on healing as well. This is literally for anyone who wants to become a deliverance minister or get into deliverance or, or further their healing and deliverance. Buy this book and go through it. I actually bought it with a DVD course where you can go through the training so you've got like the door closing prayer, prayer which is a powerful prayer. Um, we went through the door closing of prayer again. So I actually have done the the deliverance session through the DVDs with Everett E. Cox. And then yesterday I actually had a genuine face-to-face -face FaceTime session on FaceTime where we had a deliverance session. And, and um, me being how I am, because I like to cut right to the meat and the veg, when we were reading through the, the door closing prayer, I was like, I've done this though, I've done this. And um, we went through it and things were coming up and there was things that were coming up that I didn't even realize um, were issues, you know? And Everett was talking to me about about uh, forgiveness and that's one of the other things I wanna go into in this vi video is the importance of forgiveness and, and how the revelation that I got on um, forgiveness this past week, both from Everett E. Cox and from my brother in Christ, Ralph Gray. And I'm going to share that revelation in this video. I may actually do a video specifically on forgiveness because I know it's something that everybody struggles with. We've all been through trauma. We've all been through hurt. We've all been through betrayal, disappointments. Many things have happened to us throughout the course of our lives. And everyone has some sort of bitterness and unforgiveness. And actually, that's what Everett said when we went through the deliverance tick list. I've written down some of the stuff that we went through on the li on the piece of paper here. But there's actually a deliverance tick list in the book that he, he said print out. I don't have a printer handy, so I couldn't print it out. So I just wrote out everything out in time for the deliverance. And we went... We went through it and he said that there's there's just staple things on the book. This is the deliverance tick sheet. So this is literally what you need for all deliverance. So we went through that, what was on there. And um, he was telling me how pretty much like there's 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 some asterisks areas that are asterisks that literally ha ha everyone has. Like for bitterness, for example, is one of the main um key group groupings of demons that everyone has so we went through that we've we've brought up many uh many of the um of the traumas uh we was basically doing the the stuff that's on the dvd uh training that i've already done loads of hours of but what happened this time round in the live deliverance session with everett was i was being brought through certain memories and traumas from childhood that were becoming an open door for de demonic forces to oppress me and work through me and these were just like traumas and things that were like yeah 
that was traumatic at the time as a child, but it wasn't like the big traumas, the ones that like I thought really traumatized me, obviously like physical abuse in childhood, you know, certain things like that. These are like minor um, traumas that if they had happened as an adult, I probably wouldn't they wouldn't have been traumatic but as a child they're so traumatic because you're not you haven't got the emotional um you're not emotionally immature enough to 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 realize what's going on and deal with it in in the right manner so and Everett was talking about how that's an open door and a lot of um our traumas and evil spirits come in in childhood just from some of the traumas so we went through that we were bringing up the wounds we had inner healing uh, very thorough. Um, Everett E. Cox is very thorough. His book is very thorough. The way he does the deliverance is top of the range. And out of every, out of any deliverance minister I ever, I mean, I said, I I saw a, a handful of deliverance ministers. I had like two deliverances online, uh, and then I went in and had about. I think I've had like three deliverances in churches where people just prayed over me. Those were all useless. The church ones, the ones online were a bit were okay, but they still weren't as far as ever. So my encouragement is that you find a mature deliverance minister who's been in the game for years and knows what they've been doing. Don't. Don't go and get someone to do deliverance on you who's in their 20s, 30s, 40s. I'd say they've got to be over the age of 50, 60. Everett's in his 90s. He's been in deliverance for... I don't even know how long he's been in deliverance for, but I know it's probably longer than 30, 40 years. He's been in delivery in the game for a long time. So he knows his stuff. So why, why I'm saying this is important is because when you get a mature deliverance minister who knows what they're doing and they've been in the game for a long time, they understand legal rights and they understand the trauma. They do the healing, the inner healing for the traumas. So the wounds come up, you get the inner healing. That then releases a load of spirits and right legal rights. You revoke the legal rights and you go through all of this. The door closing prayer that I mentioned that's on this DVD course and in the book. That is a major key part. And the major one of the main things he hashed down on me was he was like, look, the unforgiveness and the bitterness thing is a major, major, major like flaw in if you can't forgive and you harbour bitter toward bitterness towards other people, you're leaving a massive open door for the demonic forces to oppress you and possess you and work through you, and you're never gonna ever get deliverance. And um, he he then hashed down and he said, look, what I'm trying to say is it doesn't mean that the person that you're forgiving deserves forgiveness because what they did was wrong. Because if they're, you're giving them forgiveness, but they're not even sorry, they don't necessarily deserve that forgiveness. But he's saying, but you're doing the forgiveness for yourself to revoke the legal rights and break the curse so that that so that there's no way that that you're that you're going to be oppressed by these forces so actually one of the 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 key commandments is um what god expects of us in exodus 20 12 is honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land the lord your god is giving you so basically that's basically saying that without honouring your parents, even if they have wronged you, physically abused you, sexually abused you, emotionally abused you, psychologically abused you, neglected you, rejected you, whatever it is they did, everyone's trauma is different. Some people didn't even have parents, you know, they grew up with foster parents or whatever. But all of these are traumas. It doesn't matter whether it's emotional trauma or physical trauma or sexual trauma. We all have resentment and bitterness towards our parents for how they behaved. And um, he was basically saying that this is like one of the main key problems to get in deliverance if you choose to not forgive. So he says it's not our reason, it's not our right to then harbour a grudge against someone years later in the hope that we're punishing that person because what we're actually doing is we're cursing ourselves by disobeying the commandments of not honouring your parents. So... He says the Lord will then deal with your father. You know, it's mainly my father who's put me through a lot of physical abuse, psychological abuse, emotional abuse. That he said, that's those sins are on him. They're on his shoulders. 
he's got to give account for that when he when he passes away you know uh, but he was trying to say to me that if i don't honor my parents and forgive given what, what has happened there's going to be a curse of death on my life and one of the legal rights for the evil spirits to remain there was that i didn't i wasn't didn't want to honor my mother and father because of my honor my mother but more so it was my father because of how they were with me growing up the emotional psychological abuse physical abuse so narcissistic abuse in childhood but so that was basically a legal right that we had to revoke and he was he really hashed down on that and then really you know said to me look if you honor and forgive all these blessings are going to come your way because because you're not honoring your you're basically allowing a curse to remain on your life so then suddenly i'm understanding the whole forgiveness thing way more this is why it's brought that revelation in forgiveness to me and the thing that my brother in christ ralph gray shared with me the other day about forgiveness as well because i said because god said to me honor your mother and father forgive your parents he's been saying that the holy spirit's been saying that to me lately and i'm like okay show me how how do i do that like, i'll do it if you can show me how because they put me through so much trauma got the pain in me but this deliverance session with Everett ecox we're bringing up the traumas so the pain's not in me once the pain's gone then you can forgive so you need the inner healing as well um there's a video i've done on the channel uh, the supernatural healing process where i get you uh, get jesus to reach in and take stuff that was adapted from Everett ecox's course but buy the dvd training do the deliverance on that but also book yourself in with a with with a deliverance minister that's to, that is in involved in inner healing and deliverance so you can get healed from the wounds then you can forgive then you can move on then you can break the curse because without breaking these curses you're going to have legal rights for these demons to remain and oppress you and uh, anything that satan can use as a leak as an open door he will use he's got no mercy so we use it so that was a real revelation about that and the what ralph gray said about forgiveness what he shared with me is he said um forgive the bible says forgive seven times 70 so he said what i did my brother in christ ralph gray was sharing with me was it was my he said his father was also abusive as well emotionally psychologically abusive and he was sharing to, with me the testimony that he said what i did with people who wronged me is i just started saying out like loud life and death is given through the power of the tongue so i started saying out loud that i forgive this person even though i don't feel like it i forgive this person i choose to t uh, jesus take these wounds from me i forgive this person so it's a case of saying that all the time and you will be saying that until death every time a new trauma comes up a memory comes up you speak over it speak it out loud so god can hear that that's written in accounts in the courts of heaven they will go back and say well he said he's been um evoking and de de decreeing and declaring that he forgives and you will start to it's like the law of attraction in the new age they used to say in the law of attraction you know you speak it out into existence affirmations you affirm it you believe it and it's like the more you say it the more you'll start to believe it so the forgiveness thing is basically a case of constantly saying i forgive them even though i feel like not so every time you're getting tormented by these thoughts and feelings and memories and and rum, 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 ruminating ruminating about certain things that's happened you're going to say i forgive i forgive and you're going to keep saying that and you're going to slowly quell down the emotions within you combine that with the healing the supernatural healing process as well um, and you're going to get a breakthrough in your revelation, in your in your in your healing, your forgiveness. So yeah, we went through some of the, the traumas in childhood. A lot of things was coming up that I didn't really know were 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 that much of a major issue and a, a, an open door where a lot of demons got in. Um, we were healing that. We were then breaking the curses. The demons were coming up and out. And it ever uh, uh, was confronting the strongman uh, spirits within myself. So I actually found out that I had 20 demonic spirits residing within me or around me. Um, one of them was Lucifer. And when he told me Lucifer, I was immediately like, Lucifer? Like, what? Like, I'm not like, I wasn't doing like pentagrams or like satanic. I wasn't doing any of this like pagan, like major pagan uh, stuff. So I was baffled that Lucifer would be in me or around me or pressing me. 
But what was uh, what what I then learned was he was on assignment. So the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He was actually on assignment um, to to basically derail my life. And um, when when ever the deliverance minister brought Lucifer up and he was asking him what his legal rights were, again the legal rights, the majority of them was bitterness towards family members, also bitterness towards uh, past friendships and girlfriends. You know, um, basically people who are close to you who've really harmed you. You know, and it's and it generally is the case that we're normally um, sick and twisted and bitter about something that came from someone really close to us. Because if some just normal randomer says something to you on the street or does you does a, a number on you but you don't know them, like it's not your mother or father or your brother or sister or your girlfriend or, or boyfriend or whatever, then you're not going to be bothered about it. It's that and it's the betrayals and the being done wrong by people that you love that really hurts us. So it was given we were breaking the legal rights and then he was going back to Lucifer saying, right, Lucifer, is the legal right gone? Yes or no? Is that the truth? He was saying, "What's the, you know, what what are the lies that you've been speaking on my life? This this spirit, and it was the lies on my life. Uh, I'm trying to remember what they were. The lies on my life was food will not nourish my body. Um, I won't live past the age of 35. I won't I, I won't I won't get married. I won't have children. Um, just like like horrible horrific like curses like basically like this guy has got to go like these are the what we're speaking over his life um we're basically speaking that he's not gonna like the food's not gonna nourish his body and he's not gonna have good health and all of this stuff so it was like it was crazy to hear that um come back it's like whoa and um one of the the things was i've been obviously dealing with like a lot of fatigue and back pain and all this stuff and ever it was going over it the deliverance minister was going over it and saying is that back pain related to this is the back is the legal right for that and then the spirits are telling us because they have to answer to jesus um and the angels that were surrounding us in the deliverance so we're breaking the legal rights getting major breakthroughs in all of that area stuff breaking off um the curses it was speaking the curses and then also he then forced the demon the spirit to look in to my blessings and the spirit was like i can't go in there it's too bright <laughs> and the deliverance minister was like well put some put some sunglasses on you you've got to go in there go in there and he forced the spirit to go in and look in and then say everything that's in my life that's prophesized that's written in my book of life that god has for me and then it was all of the you know it was all of the opposites of the lies that they were speaking a loving family a big house a worldwide ministry success you know recording music for the kingdom a whole heap of stuff great health big family loving wife marriage all of this stuff uh you know li living a long life and so you could see how and then he went came back to the spirit and he said is this why you was you were speaking the lies on 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 this man's life because because he has a great assignment from the almighty and then and the spirits like uh, yes so and it was just a, like a real amazing experience um to really genuinely see what's actually been going on because for many years i've dealt with so much uh deep spiritual warfare where i felt like i haven't been able to get ahead so that was one of the 20, 20 spirits. I'm going to go through some more deliverance with probably with Everett and, and I'm booked up for deliverance with uh, Daniel Adams's um, deliverance ministry, um, the UK branch of that. So my encouragement is go through with deliverance, find a mature deliverance minister, get booked up, do this stuff because doing your self-deliverance and deliverance in yourself is great fasting praying listening to deliverance prayers is great but there's things like a lot of what he was what i was learning from this session was that oh there's actually things that are here because they're on assignment there's a lot of things that we've you think you getting delivered for certain things because you were involved in the occult or 
you know, you lived a life prior to Christ of drink, drugs, crime, whatever it was, you you know, sexual sin, whatever it was, that your life prior to coming to Christ, you think, well, everything is just my sins or my, or, or, you know, but there's actually, no, there are spirits that are on assignment to destroy you. And you can tell from what I just said, the curses that these, these things were trying to speak over my life. And I could say it's evidently clear that I could see the results of these curses because I felt weakness in my body and, you know, like what they said, food doesn't nourish you. I really have been under deep warfare, but now I know why. Because of, because of the anointing and the purpose that the Almighty has on my life. Praise God. Hallelujah, you know. Um, and God, God really does love us with a deep love. And he does want us to, because he knows what we're here to. We're all here. We all have a uh, what we, you'd call destiny or life purpose to be on this planet. And... Um, that is, you know, evidently was revealed to me through the deliverance. Some of that I in part knew. Um, it sounds like like I'm blowing my own trumpet. But some of the things I part knew because, for example, when they said about recording music, I've written some Christian rap music and I like I've got a, a yearning to want to uh, get my ministry out there and help people and a passion for God and a passion for providing solutions and encouraging others and giving people my testimony and saving souls for the kingdom that was another one saving many souls for the kingdom so i knew so some of it was true but then there were certain things that was being said like you're gonna have a big house a big family you know i didn't know so and it just goes to show you know so remember speak uh, blessings out of your mouth remember to honor your mother and father and remember um, unforgiveness or bitterness is a massive open door and allows curses on your life before i go i'm going to wrap this up i just want to go into the blessings and the curses from deuteronomy 28 i'm reading from the new international version um that's just the version that came up on google so deuteronomy 28 so blessings for obedience if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your kneading trowel will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you, against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction and flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you on oath. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him, then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb. That is the stomach where much of the blessings and that are coming from, you know, the seed of life. The young of your livestock and the crops of your ground in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations but will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top and never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. Other gods meaning idolatry and, and idolatry can obviously be anything you know, we can idolise absolutely anything. Money, pop stars, rock stars, rap stars, movie stars, sports stars, whatever it is. And now we've got the curses for disobedience. So this is when you do not obey the Lord's uh, words and, 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 and what he's written in the book of life, you know. However, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all his commands and decrees I'm giving you today... 
all these curses will come on you and overtake you. You will be cursed in the city and cursed in the country. <clears throat> Your basket and your kneading trowel will be cursed. The fruit of your womb will be cursed and the crops of your land and the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. You will be cursed when you come in and cursed when you go out. The Lord will send on you curses, confusion and rebuke in everything you put your hand to until you are destroyed and come to sudden ruin because of the evil you have done in forsaking him. The Lord will plague you with diseases until he has destroyed you from the land you are entering to possess. The Lord will strike you with wasting disease, with fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, with blight and mildew, which will plague you until you perish. The sky over your head will be bronze, the ground beneath you iron. The Lord will turn the rain of your country into dust and powder. It will come down from the skies until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You will come at them from one direction, but free from, flee from them in seven, and you will become a thing of horror to all of the kingdoms of, on earth. Your carcasses will be flood for all the birds and the wild animals, and there will be no, no one to frighten them away. The Lord will afflict you with the boils of Egypt. Obviously, Egypt was known for idolatry, and with tumours, festering sores, and the itch from which you cannot be cured. The Lord will afflict you with madness, blindness and confusion of mind. At midday you will grope about like a blind person in the dark. You will be unsuccessful in everything you do. Day after day you will be oppressed and robbed with no one to rescue you. You will be pledged to be married to a woman, but another will take her and rape her. You will build a house, but you will not live in it. You will plant a vineyard, but you will not even begin to enjoy its fruit. Your ox will be slaughtered before your eyes, but you will eat none of it. Your donkey will be forcefully, forcefully taken from you and will not be returned. Your sheep will be given to your enemies and no one will rescue them. Your sons and daughters will be given to another nation and you, and you will wear out your eyes watching them from day after day, powerless to lift a hand. A people that you do not know will eat what your land and labour produce and you will have nothing but cruel oppression all of your days. It goes on. I think you get the picture. Read it, Deuteronomy 28. Blessings and the curses from blessings from obedience, curses from disobedience. This video has gone on too long. So as I said, I recommend you buy this book and DVD deliverance course just for your own arsenal one to have in i'm actually going to read this we were speaking about the book because i read it about a year ago ever it was like he was saying things from the book that i'd forgotten about and i was like i'm going to read it again it's that good i'm actually going to go back and read it again and it's such a thin easy book straight to the point anyway people catch you on another video soon thanks for all the likes comments shares subscribes um views continue to share this uh, content so we can continue to grow god's kingdom online you are blessed. Peace, love, unity, faith, hope and charity. Rawr.